Hi, it's Benjamin Douglas Ray with another edition of Sustainable Cannabis TV. I am here with Green. How are you? Hey, I'm doing wonderful. Enjoying this beautiful spring weather here in Canada. Yeah, yeah. You know, we've got uh, we've got snow and then sun and snow and sun down here in Colorado, but it pretty much does look like this right now. It's a great time of year, Colorado, springtime, uh, pretty much nothing better than that. Very nice. Very nice. Yeah. There's something about spring when it's in the air, everybody just gets excited. It's like we're what we're all coming back to life, right? Out of mm -hmm. our hibernating. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Now, if we can just get rid of this COVID stuff, we can all get out there and truly enjoy the weather, right? It's happening. It's happening. <laughs> Coming soon. I've got yes. a, a couple uh, a couple announcements here for, for the audience, for the viewers and listeners. On Tuesday, I'm speaking, um, the moderating the Sustainability Awards at the Emerge Conference. I did a post yesterday um, where you can click to get tickets with the discount that I have there for you. And then on Friday, we've got the uh, Jake Havnick interview. Uh, with Salute Technologies. It's going to be a good one. But today, uh, Irene, uh, Green Irene, it's all about you. So tell the viewers and listeners where you are now, um, what you, what got you into this industry, what brought you up to where you are today. And I was really interested to hear exactly what you're doing right now with, with your caregiving. So uh, it's up to you. Go ahead. Excellent. Well, okay. For, for viewers and listeners who don't know who I am, I'm Green Irene. I'm a cannabis um, cannapreneur, I guess. I started off as a patient, and we'll get to that because your questions are fully loaded. <laughs> um, let's see, where am I today? You can find me on Facebook and my website and all that sort of thing. But what I do is I help people heal themselves using cannabis neuro-linguistic programming and hypnosis as these three things help us to take care of our own selves, our own health and wellness without the influence of pharmaceuticals, which as we well know, may not be in our best interest as patients. Um, that being said, how did I get here? Wow, uh, I was a patient and I, ha I was in a hospital bed, a wheelchair. I spent seven out of 10 years uh, living like that. It, not living, we'll call it oh. existing in a pharmaceutical oh. haze. And um, then one thing led to another and through a series of convoluted events, uh, I was using cannabis for pain, but I was only smoking it. So I, hmm. I, I didn't know how to use cannabis. Um, and, and, and then one thing led to another and I went off all of the pharmaceuticals, cold turkey, uh, 93 pills a day, two injections and a fentanyl patch. I had been wow. on life support twice. Wow. Uh, and upon my recovery, I refused to go back to the pharmas, to, to, to the medical, to, you know, to the, the chemical shit storm, I call it. Mm -hmm. um, and I was looking for other means and methods of taking care of myself. If I was going to live, I was going to live and not simply exist. Over the course of the next several years, I, I, I really had to study cannabis because prior to my illness, I was very against cannabis consumption. And you have um, some published articles about that, about being anti-cannabis prior. Is that right? I do. I do. Yeah. Late 80s, early 90s, I had... I, like many people of my generation, was educated by the public service announcements of the time on television. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I was taught that cannabis was a horrible drug um, and it would do nasty, evil things to me. So, so like many of my generation, we avoided it. We, yeah. we didn't use it. Um, when I got sick and I figured, okay, you know what? I have to go on the pharmaceuticals. I, I'll try anything at this point. Uh, and so, you know. <laughs> A family member gave me some weed and, and it was instant relief for the mm. muscle spasticity. And it was like, oh, that worked. Upon discussing it with my doctor, of course, as you can imagine, right. uh, he was completely against it. Um, but I continued anyway, because I, I don't do well at listening, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm grateful that I did. So once I got off of all of the pharmaceuticals, after about 10 years of pure hell, wow. uh, I got off of all the pharmaceuticals all at once. Um, I went straight, I strictly using cannabis. And I, my partner, my healthcare partner, was offering it to me in every which way. We were using it in bath solutions. We mm. were using it in body wraps, impregnating muslin cloth, and using that as a body wrap for, for, for the achy muscles from, 
from the spasticity. Uh, I was ingesting it, drinking it in teas. And, and so <clears throat> once I, I guess it took about nine months and I stood on my feet without any additional support devices for wow. the first time in years and took a few steps. And so it was how many, how many years was that, uh, that you that hadn't walked without it? Close to seven. Now in that time, uh -huh. I had some, some elevated times where my health had improved because with an autoimmune disease, of course, something like fibromyalgia, you have ups and downs. It goes on a scale. Um, and, and the flare ups usually take you down for longer than your good times, you know? Um, so it had been quite some time since I had comfortably done that. And uh, it was wonderful to be able to do that again. And then I and then my, as I said, my study started, I had to know, I, I truly believed I had stumbled onto something that no one else knew about that this cannabis, if used in all these ways, would help you heal yourself. And I was ecstatic about it. So I did all the studying. And, and the more I studied, the more I learned, the more I learned, I had a lot to learn still. There was okay. that much more to learn. And uh, all, all kinds of activists had known this for years and stuff. So of course, I brought the studies to my doctor and not surprisingly, he was rather ignorant about it and refused to further educate himself on the subject. So hmm. he, he's no longer my, my physician, imagine that. Um, you know, because our health and wellness really, we are the first line of defense when it comes to our health and wellness. Hmm. And educated patient becomes a healthy patient in, in, and so in my if you opinion. have to become your own best advocate you're saying a lot of doctors who either choose to be ignorant or don't you know don't really know what to do you're the one who needs to make the decision about you i you know and and i yes absolutely i think it's important that we look after ourselves first um if if, if your diet is crap you are, for all intent and purposes, living a very sedentary life in that you sit in a chair all day and, and stare at a boob tube or a TV, you know? Um, and, and so there's not much activity or exercise. You're not exercising your brain. Um, and then one day you say, oh, I feel like crap. Well, of course you do. You've done nothing to help yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, so to run to a doctor and, and load up on pills because they can give you a label, probably isn't the in your best interest as a patient. Uh -huh. um, and, you know, some clients that have come to me over the last couple of years, because as as an, as a uh, as a survivor of fibromyalgia, I have lived pharmaceutically free now for I'm going into my ninth year. Um, I walk, I hike, I bicycle, I dance with my grandchildren. I, you know, I'm living life again. And uh people want to know how'd you do it right yeah. so so right. i share that i share that with a, with as many people as i can from a stage from live platforms like this um i will do it in, in through my books through my website through my blog posts all these sorts of things because helping you help you is probably the most humane thing i can do given my experience we all have purpose in this life and and I went through what I went through to be able to help others not have to go through that. Right. Well, you know, I, I like your your kind of transformation and journey from, um, you know, from meds to cannabis and then off from, you know. So if you're someone who's thinking about the two together, you know, side by side, can you talk a little bit about that? Just cannabis versus medication, you know, and, and whatever that means to you, because you you've experienced the uh, both of them pretty profoundly. Uh, absolutely. And you know, I will not by any stretch of the imagination criticize the pharmaceutical purpose in, of the industry. And the purpose is to help us when we need that, that quick jolt. Mm -hmm. So there is a time and place for pharmaceuticals Absolutely. When we're talking about pain management or chronic illness, that sort of thing, there's definitely a time and place for pharmaceuticals. But to use that as a life sustaining um, product, we're not doing ourselves very good. So, so, so let's talk, for example, somebody with fibromyalgia, we're very chemical, chemically sensitive. So if we're using pharmaceuticals to help with the symptoms, we're also increasing the symptoms. Mm. 
So one of the very first things I learned very early on is when I went, when, when I finally caved and allowed my doctor to prescribe me some medication, it worked and mm. it worked great uh, until it didn't. And it didn't take long for my body to develop that tolerance. So mm. then what we, of course, did was added some more pharmaceuticals and, you know, some more dollars out of my purse. Right. <laughs> and, and they worked and it worked. And you know what? It was worth those dollars until they didn't. And now it's time to add more and, and, and more and more and more. And you see how this cycle is happening till ultimately I was taking pharmaceuticals for the side effects of the pharmaceuticals for the symptoms that I was experiencing that were only increasing because they were also working against me. Well, you'd said that you were taking at one point 92 uh, pills. Is that right? A day? Yes. Yes. Now, not it's not that many prescriptions. I mean, I was on okay. eight Senecot. My because of the pharma because of the um, narcotics that I was taking for this pain, this, the dystonia, the the muscle spasticity, all that sort of thing. Um, <clears throat> my bowels had backed up, and towards the end of that illness, I was having a bowel movement every twenty eight to thirty two days. The only reason we hadn't gone in for a surgery to to remove my bowel and 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 have a functioning, uh, I don't know, a bag on the outside of me so that it would work differently. The only reason we didn't do that is I wasn't strong enough to undergo surgery yet. Thank God. Hmm. <laughs> Thankfully, right? right? Yeah. Um, thank cannabis because cannabis has been my healing grace. I later learned to use and to make my own. Uh, cannabis suppositories, uh, which mm. and and enemas, which really helped with the blockage after I got off of all the pharmaceuticals to remove all of that gunk, that years of toxicity that had built up in the colon. Um, mm. I now have a healthy bowel. I mean, it's not in great shape, but it's getting there. And I'm pretty sure I have a few years left to get it perfect. <laughs> well, that's good. That's a good story. Yes. Well, when you know, I've got a question for you in your kind of in your transition, you know, when you went from uh, meds to cannabis and, you know, cannabis. So what what would the when when a patient is considering cannabis, what are the challenges that you see? Oh, nowadays, it's even scarier than it was in the past. In the past, of course, it was legality, stigmatism and archaic attitudes that we had to be very that were cumbersome. Nowadays, it's that there is too much information out there. Mm -hmm. There is so much missing information, misinformation. I mean, and 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 the curiosities abound. Everybody knows something. Um, it's a nascent industry, so admittedly, there are a lot of snake oil salesmen. There are a lot of grassroots legacy uh, craft cannabis creators that do fantastic products and put them out there. And there are some really good legal market products that are out there. But to find them and to know what is right for you. So I think saying all of that, I think the biggest challenge for a new patient, someone unfamiliar with cannabis, it's the education. Hmm. It's, it's, you know, information is power, but power is good, bad, and otherwise, right? It can be used for good, it can be used for bad, and most of the time it just floats around existing. So I think for patients or, or anybody considering cannabis over pharmaceuticals, an education is absolutely in, essential. And one of the things I say to start with is first argue the information that you're reading or hearing argue it. Even if you agree with it, argue it just so you can find out what the other side of the coin is, mm. just so that you have a full awareness of what you're trying to learn. There are so many different ways to use cannabis. I never would have dreamt. I, again, grew up with public service announcements. So I learned that you, you roll up a joint and you smoke a joint, and you sit back like Cheech, you know? Yeah. <laughs> But as time went on, um, as we, I, I, you know, I had a caregiver who was very invested in, in cannabis and, and believed very strongly in the power of it, its healing and medicinal powers. 
that it was infused into my bath. It was infused mm. into everything I ate. It mm. was infused. We impregnated muslin cloths to make body wraps mm. for, for the restless leg syndrome that I experienced, the muscle spasticity, the aches and pains that come from a, a flare up of dystonia. Dystonia is where, you know, all of your every muscle or any muscle goes into um, like a Charlie horse and that mm. can happen anywhere in your body. Wow. Um, you know, I, I, I would get them often in my neck or, or facially. Um, and, and, and that's horrible. It's a right. horrible pain. You feel like if you move, even, even if you take too deep of a breath, you're going to snap something. I mean, our bodies are, our, the human body is an amazing machine. Like uh, its ability to heal is just phenomenal. If we give it the chance and we give it the right tools and the right resources. Mm -hmm. Loading it up in a chemical shit storm probably isn't going to work. Mm -hmm. Well, okay. how do you know which, when you say education and argue both sides, how do you know what information is, is right and what's wrong or misinformation? If you have the answer to that, you are a genius. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a genius. I, you know what? I really don't know. There again, the more I learn, the more I've learned, the more I learn there is to learn. Yeah. Um, this plant has been being studied for decades, centuries. Mm -hmm. uh, it has been used in 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 you know Asian cultures going back three thousand, four thousand, five thousand years ago. We found it in Egyptian mummies. So the power of in, of the healing of the cannabis plant has been long known. We have studied it for well over 80 years, um, you know, in our times. And every time one study comes out, three more come out behind it. Some mm. of the information is contradictory. One of the things I recommend to all of my clients always is cannabis is as unique to you as you are to the world, which means your endocannabinoid system it's just like your central nervous system. It's yours. Mm. So what we're going to do is we can, and, and what we do, what I often start every client with is a cannabis log or a leaf log journal. And that says, this is the strain I used. This is what, and, and so you basically have an idea of what it is. So what is that cannabinoid profile and the terpene profile? Because as we know, the terpenes can have a tremendous effect on the value of the cannabinoids and, and vice versa. Mm -hmm. So what comes out in this plant, um, how it affects your body specifically, once you've logged three, four, five, six, seven different strains of cannabis, you kind of get an idea. This one really works for me for this. Mm -hmm. And this one really helps with that. The name no longer becomes important, but that profile, you know that a, you know, 13 to 20 percent THC with a one to seven percent CBD, let's say, with the terpenes, myrcene, and I'm making this shit up, but linalool, you know, yeah. like I'm, I'm, I'm pulling these, these out of my butt. Yeah. But, but once you know what your profile is, you now have a healing tool for yourself. The other thing is learning how to use cannabis. There's so much more. Smoking a cannabis joint is the most ineffective way and wasteful way to consume the plant. Hmm. Um, we, we flash evaporate over, I think it's over 40% of the cannabinoids just by putting it to heat, yeah. you know, putting the flame to it because can THC and, and, and the, the important cannabinoids that we've studied like CBG and CBD, they're all within five degrees of THC and THC is released from the plant at 347 degrees Fahrenheit. Of course, that lighter is a lot hotter. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. So learning the different methods of consumption. I actually, I have a book that should be, uh, I don't think it's a bit, I don't think it's it's live yet on, on Amazon. I'll have to check, but it will be within the next month or so, next few weeks. Um, and it's called Methods of Consumption. It will be a free download. And it just, it goes through what are the benefits from, from consuming cannabis in this capacity? Uh, and, and what are the different methods? I mean, ingestion and inhalation are the two most common. 
right? Topicals now with this industry blossoming the way it is, uh, topicals have become a big thing. Everybody's going, wow, but you know, there's bath soaks and, and you can make all of this stuff at home using the product that you know works for you or using the product that grows in your backyard. And I don't know about you, but I really would rather eat the tomatoes out of my garden than the ones that came off the transport truck after 36 hours. Yeah, you, know? You, know what, you know what's in it and you know what works for you, for sure. Exactly, exactly. So, you know, um, as far as the quality of information that's out there, there are some really uh, good resources to look at. Uh, mm -hmm. One, I mean, I post a blog almost every day. Um, but I'm gathering information from other locations. Leafly's not bad as far as strains, knowing what's in the strain. Um, there's, I love growing marijuana. If you wanna grow your own, there's, there's so much information available. It's really finding what, what resonates well with you as a patient or a potential consumer, determining what resonates well, and then challenge that. Mm challenge what you've learned because none of us are perfect and we all deliver information as we absorb it and that means it's generalized it's mm. we've deleted some of the information and we've distorted a crap load of it too right yeah. so um because we all see things differently based on our internal representation system so i think it's important to know what the risks are once you found something that resonates with you yeah determine what the risks are. I want to just uh, put up a comment here. Um, <clears throat> Emerald Jamaica says, not everything is for everyone. There are many other options for consumption. And that's true. You you have to find what works for you, whether it's, you know, vaping or or even, as you say, an in inefficient joint or there are just so many. And that's the point is find out what works for you because it's, you know, your neighbor or your spouse or whomever, it's going to be totally different. And it may be different, you know, with, from the same company, strain to strain, year to year, just like wines, they're different. So you need to keep trying things over and over to find what works. Exactly. And, you know, here's the funny thing, too. And I only just, like I say, the more I learn, the more I learn there is to learn. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I just recently found out, and, and only because I got a chronometer, right? But the buds on the bottom of the plant had a significantly different profile than the cones that I took from the top of the plant. This is the same mama plant. Right. It just produced a different profile. So again, it's really important to know what works for you and 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 focus in that in that area to find the great the, the best strategy or solution to to your therapy. Well, that's great. And yeah. See, I'm a I, I am by by far I, I I love to smoke the joint. It's it, there's something ceremonial about it. It's it's social, even though COVID. But <laughs> um, you know, it's a social thing. It's right. it's, a, it, it, it's a ceremonial thing. When I for medicinal purposes, I always recommend to my clients that they vape for a whole lot of reasons. One, they're getting all of their medicine. Mm -hmm. um, and medicine, and, and let's face it, the shit's expensive. And if you're already sick, chances are your finances aren't in the greatest of shape because not, not everyone runs out and has everything in line for the just in case. We don't live like right. that. Right. Um, you know, things get in the way. So <clears throat> vaping your cannabis, not only do you achieve more benefit, more of the medicinal value of it, but you also save on your product because you're not burning more than half of it away. One of the things I tell my patients all the time, if you can get yourself the volcano, right? Um, the volcano is an amazing, uh, I've had, I had a lady, she's passed now, one of my clients, she COPD, severe COPD, lung damage, pleurisy, all kinds of things. The only thing giving her the coaxial relief in her rib cage was uh, there was two specific strains of cannabis that she was using. Um, and it was the only thing giving her the relief that she needed. But of course, she couldn't smoke it. Yeah. Using the vaporizer, the volcano vaporizer, she was able to get all of her medicine in her, have the relief that she needed prior to passing. Wow, that's so, great. Well, yeah. I've got a, I have a question for you. You just mentioned COVID and, you know, the social about joint. But I, I did want to touch on that because, you know, in this past year, especially, there's been a lot of mental health 
you know, challenges that, that emerge from a lot of people around the anxiety. So I wanted to ask you about that is how do you see cannabis as a therapy or a strategy around mental health and wellness challenges now or, or anytime? What a great question. Uh, cannabis, yes, absolutely, especially right now. And I've been doing an awful lot of consult consulting in that, that particular area, anxiety, depression, uh, all of that sort of thing. Cannabis can induce paranoia, as we very well know. So once hmm. again, knowing your strain, knowing that profile ahead of time, if you're someone who has smoked cannabis in the past and got all paranoid hiding in the bushes from the police sirens on the television, um, it's okay. Chances are that strain simply didn't work for you. Yeah. You, we want to try something different than that, that has a different profile. So I, I always discourage people from saying, oh, no, never again. Um, always try something at least twice because the first time might have just been an off experience. There are different strains for different pains. There are some that are really, really, really good for anxiety. Gelato, I found, was one. Um, ACDC, it's more of a, a CBD, high CBD, but it really does help relax the body. Now, mm. I've been, uh, I'm one of those persons who I don't make New Year's resolutions, but I write a bucket list every New Year's leave so that for the next year, I want to do these things on my bucket list, right? This year, how are we going to do that? I mean, I can't do this. I can't do that. I'm not going to be able, you know, right? So many yeah. things were left uncertain. So I wrote a bucket list. I'm going to do a butt a day. And I thought, I can't do that. I didn't use that anyway. Yeah. <laughs> a strain a day. So I'm trying a new strain every day. Some of them have been really good. Some of them have been, whoa, not trying that one again. Or, ew, mm -hmm. that was terrible. But um, so, yeah, coming Coming back to using cannabis for anxiety and depression. The one thing we don't, the one caution I really put out there for a lot of people is don't create a new lifestyle of laziness around using cannabis. Our brains, if given the opportunity, would love to relax and not grow anymore. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they would, you know, our, let's face it, we are inherently lazy creatures right? Um, and, and we have to stimulate ourselves. Cannabis promotes relaxation, most strains. Hmm. Getting into an over-relaxed state, habitual state, may not be the wisest of things to do. We want to, you know, we don't want to become those couch potatoes. Right. Um, and, and, and so it's important to use cannabis in combination with things like exercise mm -hmm. and meditation. Take that time to, to unwind. Uh, cannabis is an amazing vehicle to help facilitate a state, a, a nice calm state for that, mm -hmm. uh, especially when you have a really nervous anxiousness, I guess, inside of, you know, and being trapped indoors, this cabin fever stuff. Humans are social creatures. Yeah. This is terrible what it's doing to people and the sadnesses. I think it's important to focus on what we do have instead of what we don't have, to focus on uh, the things that are within our control, mm -hmm. like our mindsets, like mm -hmm. our attitudes. I mean, I dare anybody to, to stare in a mirror and say 10 times to yourself, I am happy, I am happy, and try doing that with tears. You can't. By the end of it, you will be smiling and laughing at yourself. I promise. <laughs> you know? So we don't have to. It's okay to feel depressed. It, it's okay. I, I mean, everything is changing. And the one thing that is... <sighs> breath. Okay. People say that the will to survive is the strongest will of all. Hmm. Virginia Satir, she was a, a, a very successful family therapist, said that that's not true. And she's absolutely right. It's not true. The will to keep things the same, to keep things familiar in our life, seems to outweigh that of dying, mortality. Hmm. I, people are willing to die or commit suicide to stop anything bad from happening over there. They just want that over there to stay the same. So they're willing to take 
So the will to survive may not be the strongest instinct of the human species. The will to keep things familiar is. So when you feel down, depressed, stressed, anxious, it's okay. Recognize it, but don't live there. Yeah. You know, um, hey, wow, I'm really going down into a bad place right now and I'm feeling really crappy and that TV's driving me. In. Well, then turn the damn thing off. Yeah. Seriously, it's a button. You can do it. Um, get up, jump, do some jumping jacks. Um, I went out and looked for ants with a three-year-old the other day because <laughs> the snow was gone. Let's see if the ants are back, right? Yeah. I, you know, spend some time doing these sorts of things. I think it's important um, to recognize that change doesn't have to be fearful. We don't mm -hmm. have to be. We can we can exchange fear for excitement. Looks and great. It's, that's all, it's awesome. Tons of great information here. Um, I need to wrap things up here. I mean, we, we could go on for, for a long time. You've got a lot of great information. And I, and I want to say to the viewers and listeners, uh, reach out to Green Irene because she's got a lot of information. What's the best way for people to get a hold of you if they want to continue the conversation or, or learn more about what you do? Uh, thank you. Yes, absolutely. We probably could talk for days. I know I could. <laughs> uh, reach me at greenirene.ca. So okay. that's, uh, and it's all one word, greenirene.ca. Um, I have some really exciting stuff coming out. If anybody that's listening, any of our viewers or, or listeners uh, are struggling or fighting fibromyalgia right now, fibromyalgic symptoms, I have helped hundreds of patients that were just like me uh, or just like I was. And we uh, now have the program and the book and the manual and the self-guided uh, webinar tutorials, all that sort of thing to help people create their own strategies for themselves so that, you know, they can heal themselves. It really is my objective to get people to, you know, I want to help you help you, you right. know, help you help yourself. Um, so I'm on Facebook, Green Irene Canna Talk. Uh, I have the Fibro Fight series coming out, I believe, at the end of May and greenirene.ca there's a couple of programs i'm on youtube i uh i may be going back to pace radio I've, i'm taking a sabbatical right now looking after my grandfather um so i'm not on the radio right now and we're not doing the television shows or the lives for the mm -hmm. most part but uh yeah but otherwise i'm I'm around. I'm everywhere. <laughs> well, great. It's it's uh, great information. I do want to say to the viewers and listeners that there were a lot of great comments on here that we couldn't get to, but we will respond to all of your comments and and uh, be posting some links up there as well. So uh, keep uh, keep paying attention here to the comments. Uh, we'll answer them. And thanks for being part of the show. So thank you, Green Irene, and thank you to all the viewers and listeners out there. Thank you for having me on today. And thank you for tuning in and listening. Take care. All right. Bye.